In this video, we will talk about how we create surface features on the wafer. So when we look at a cross section of a wafer, we find that we have two different types of features. Some features exist in the bulk of the wafer, such as uh, contacts, sources and drains, and the well. These features are sometimes called bulk features, and they are formed by changing the nature of the wafer by introducing dopants of the appropriate kind. There's another kind of, of feature which uh, requires us to build something on top of the wafer. That something could be silicon dioxide, it could be metal wires, or it could be uh, the gates of MOSFETs, which are actually formed of polysilicon. So these are sometimes called surface features, and they are features that are formed on top of the wafer. They are distinguished from bulk features by the fact that they require us to deposit a material on top of the wafer. So they require us to uh, put something on the wafer that wasn't there before. Bulk features require us to just change the nature of material that was there before. Now, there are three main ways in which we can uh, create um, surface features. The first is chemical vapor deposition, CVD. Vapor deposition in general means that we um, basically spray the wafer with a uh, vapor of a certain material and then that wafer, uh, that vapor will condense and solidify on the surface of the wafer. In chemical vapor deposition what happens is we introduce precursors and precursors are chemicals, uh, more than one chemical, uh, and these two chemicals, two or more chemicals, will go into a chamber, which is a reaction chamber, and they will react with each other. When they react with each other, they will give us a wanted vapor. This wanted vapor will deposit on top of the wafer. They will also give us exhausts, which are usually in, gaze in gaseous form, and these exhaust gases will then exit the chamber through the bottom, through exhausts at the bottom. Now, CVD or chemical vapor deposition always needs heat as a catalyst, so we always need to heat the wafer. Uh, the heating could either happen through uh, inductive coupling, as is the case in this setup, or th through uh, normal resistive heating. In any case, we need some form of heat. The heat could be applied to the wafer itself, so that the chemicals on top of the wafer react, or to the chamber as a whole, so that the chemicals throughout the whole chamber react with each other. Now, chemical vapor deposition uh, has an advantage, which is that it creates a very fine and regular and pure film on top of the wafer. So if we look at the wafer and we look at the film that we create, the film is usually uh, thin uh, and it can actually be formed of any specific thickness that we want. So it's very exact and the purity of the material we deposit is high. Uh, its disadvantages are that it needs heating, but the main disadvantage in reality is that we do not have precursors or chemicals that will give us uh, CVD films of all materials. So actually CVD is usually used to make uh, polysilicon and to make silicon dioxide. We don't have precursors that allow us to uh, deposit metals by CVD, so we don't have an option to the deposit metals by CVD. Um, CVD is usually contrasted with PVD or physical vapor deposition. So physical vapor deposition is any mechanism through which a, a film of a material is deposited on a wafer through physical means, meaning that there's no chemical reaction. We just um, direct a vapor of the material or an aerosol of the material towards the wafer and it condenses and forms a film on top of the wafer. That's it. So it's just pure physics, you know, um, evaporation and condensation, uh, forming a mist and then allowing it to deposit. There's no reaction between two materials. Uh, there's no um, precursors. There's no uh, reagents. There's no um, catalysts. It's nothing chemical. It's just pure physics. 
One method of physical vapor deposition is called sputtering. And sputtering is usually for, used uh, to create metal wires on top of the wafer. And in sputtering, this is the setup for sputtering. In sputtering, there is an inlet and the wafer is on the, this end of the chamber and there's an inlet to the chamber. Um, through the inlet, we push a, a gas at a very high velocity. So there's a gas entering the chamber at a very high velocity. Uh, and this gas is inert. It does not react. It does not uh, uh, deposit materials. It doesn't do anything with the wafer. It doesn't really react with the wafer. All it does is it hits a block of the material that we want to deposit on the wafer. So if, it, if we are depositing a layer of aluminum, then this block will be uh, aluminum. If it's copper, then this block will be copper. When the high velocity um, gas particles hit the coat material, they will cause atoms of this material to um, detach and um, form an aerosol uh, or mist in the room. Uh, so we'll have very small particles of the coat material forming an aerosol in the room just because of the uh, force of impact from the air, uh, from the gas that is hitting it. So we create a uh, pressure gradient in the room so that the pressure is higher on the end containing the uh, coat material than the pressure at the end containing the wafer. This causes the coat material to diffuse from the left to the right. When it diffuses from the left to the right, it will uh, meet the wafer, where it will form a film on top of the wafer. Uh, this whole process just depends on forming a, an aerosol and then directing it so that it forms a coat. There's no heat necessary. There's no chemical reaction. So the advantage of physical vapor deposition is that it does not require heat. Its disadvantage is that the films uh, formed from physical vapor deposition are usually irregular and so they require polishing uh, because as we will see in the design flow and the fabrication flow irregularities can build up from layer to layer and they can cause a huge problem. Now um, when we compare PVD and CVD we can compare like uh, their need for heat or uh, the fineness of the film but in reality we don't actually have an option about which we use because certain materials uh, can be deposited using CVD some others can only be deposited using PVD so metals are usually uh, deposited using uh, sputtering whereas um, CVD is used to deposit silicon dioxide and uh, polysilicon now there's one, also uh, one more thing about uh, forming silicon dioxide. We have to distinguish between when we have the wafer and we have access to the surface of the wafer, such as when we uh, start the first step of photolithography. In this case, if we want to build silicon dioxide on top of the wafer, we use oxidation, which means that we just expose the top of the wafer to, a, to heat and a, an oxygen rich environment allowing the silicon on the top to react and form silicon dioxide. If we have already formed features uh, on top of the wafer, like wires or polysilicon gates, and if we have already built a layer of silicon dioxide using oxidation, we can no longer add silicon dioxide by oxidizing the substrate because we no longer have access to the substrate. So any further addition of silicon dioxide is usually done using CVD. In any case, if we are going to oxidize the wafer, what we do is that, again, we load a bunch of wafers on a quartz carrier and then we insert them into a chamber. This chamber is definitely going to be heated because oxidation requires heating and it's definitely going to have a controlled concentration of oxygen, either oxygen or water vapor. So in this case, we are uh, inserting oxygen and hydrogen, which react and form water vapor so that we have a damp, hot environment allowing the silicon to oxidize and we also allow exhaust to exit. Now, um, oxidation takes place at temperatures between 800 and 1200 Celsius. Uh, oxidation can take place at any temperature, but it takes place at a good rate at uh, such a temperature. The rate at which um, silicon oxidizes is going to depend on the concentration of gases in that chamber and the specific temperature we use. 
Recall that this temperature is much lower, for example, than the temperature used to anneal uh, silicon after iron implantation, because annealing takes place at temperatures close to 1800 Celsius, for example. Um, so we can control the thickness of the oxide we build. One disadvantage of uh, oxidation to form silicon dioxide relative to CVD is that we are going to cannibalize some of the material in the substrate in order to form the layer of silicon dioxide. But it, it really doesn't matter. Like it, again, it depends on whether we have access to the substrate or with whether we have already oxidized the substrate and we have to use CVD.